Xiao Tak Fan, Bonjour to the Monde, Je m'appelle Emily, Hola, Miamo, Emily. Hello, everyone. My name is Tawin Emily Pham, and today I would like to talk to you all about the language barrier and communication. So, as you all probably noticed, I just introduced myself in a couple of different languages Vietnamese, and French, and Spanish, and English. It's probably a little confusing since I was using all these languages. You probably all didn't understand every single word I said. But hopefully you got the gist of it. It was just an introduction. However, if I were to continue this TED Talk in one of those languages that you didn't quite understand, that wouldn't be good for either of us. We would have lost that connection between us, that connection that is the English language, our commonality that we share in the language that we speak. And the thing is, language can be a gift. It's something that connects us, but it can also be a barrier that we have to acknowledge. According to the biblical story of the Tower of Babel, at the beginning of humanity, every single human spoke one language. Everyone was in one community. They perfectly understood each other. It was perfect. So, empowered by this connection that they have, they decide to build a great tower, a giant tower, to be at the same level as God. So God hears this, hears that the people are abusing their power, and says, if as one people speaking the same language, they have come to do this, then nothing, nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So God decides to disperse the people all around the world and makes it so they can't speak the same language anymore. And this isn't good for the people. They can no longer finish their tower. They can no, no longer connect and understand with one another. And the thing is, connection and understanding is really important for all of us as human beings. I bet we all desire to be heard. We all desire to be understood. We all desire to connect with one another. And it's hard to do that all the way around the world, because now there are 7,097 known living languages in our world. It's a pretty big number. So there's no way that every single one of us is going to be able to learn all 7,097. There's no way that we can be able to speak to every single person around the world. We can't really connect verbally with everyone. We can't understand everyone. Then why don't we just go back to having one universal language? It seemed to work pretty well back in the day. Like, we could build a great tower again. Well, the thing is, language has become tied into each and every one of our culture. And culture is deeply set in each and every one of our hearts. You can't just take culture away from someone. It's their sense of belonging. It's their sense of how they understand the world in which we live. And then again, you can't take away language from culture, because things are always lost in translation. When I looked further into this idea of how language and culture are tied together, I read the book, The House on Mango Street, by Sandra Cisneros. This is a story of a young girl named Esmeralda. She is a Mexican immigrant who moves to America. It's the story of her journey through acclimating to this new American society, the challenges she faces in connecting with people. One of her challenges is the language barrier, but not in the common sense. Esmeralda speaks English, but her language barrier is hidden in a single thing, in her name. Esmeralda says, at school they say my name funny, as if the syllables were made out of tin and hurt the roof of your mouth. But in Spanish, my name is made of something softer. And this is really what the language barrier is. It's not just our inability to have long and deep conversations with people all across the world. No. The language barrier can be any small, tiny, nuanced thing, any small part of language that makes it hard for us to connect with people. For Esmeralda, it was her name. Every single time one of her American peers or teachers or anybody in her new country tried to pronounce her name, tried to connect with her, that simple, tiny mispronunciation that simple thing that distanced her from them, that diminished the quality of her connection, of her communication with everyone around her. Her name made her feel foreign, made her feel alien. And I've gone through the same struggle in my life. My name is Tawian Emily, two names. I'm the daughter of Vietnamese immigrants. They came to America after the Vietnam War as refugees. So in honor of this, they gave me two names. My Vietnamese name, Tawian, represents my Vietnamese culture, whereas Emily represents my American birth. I think it's really cool to be able to say that I have two names, 
to be able to say that I have one foot in my Vietnamese culture and one foot in my American culture. But sometimes it feels like those two feet are way too far spread apart. And so I've come to hide from my name, Tawin. So most of you guys probably know me as Emily. I remember every first day of school, ever since I was little, as the teacher would take roll call for the first time, he or she would always hesitate, stop right before pronouncing my name. I could see that concentration in their eye as they tried to deduce how to pronounce just those two syllables, Taoyin. And it's not that hard to pronounce, it's just two syllables. But the thing is, the name Taoyin looks kind of foreign to American eyes. And in the mouths of an English speaker, like all of you, it feels foreign. So every first day of school, I've come used to automatically raising my hand really high and saying, it's all right, you can call me Emily. Ever since I was little, I was afraid of the language barrier that was in my first name, Taoyin. I would subconsciously just hide away and push away my Vietnamese identity. The language barrier hidden in those two syllables made it feel like if I went by my first name, I wouldn't be able to connect with my teacher. And that fear was in both me and my teacher. My teacher was probably afraid that I would be some weird student that didn't speak English. And so I go by Emily. But the thing is, over time, I have found one language that I'm completely fluent in and that everyone around the world universally understands. And this is the language of movement, the language of dance. So if you recall my introduction, I was saying a bunch of different words. It was kind of confusing, but I was also waving my hand. And the thing is, I could have just been standing up on the stage, waving my hand, not saying a word, not making a sound, and you probably would have understood the gist of it. I was saying hello. It might have been kind of awkward for me to stand up here and just wave, but you would have gotten the point. That's the language of movement. It's commonly understood around the world that this can be a sign for hello. You don't have to speak a language to understand that. And as a dancer, I've learned that movement and language can tell so much more than just one word, hello. It can tell long stories. It can express deep emotions. In the words of the mother of modern dance, Martha Graham, as pictured here, she says, I believe that dance was the first art because it's gesture, it's communication. Dance is the hidden language of the body of the soul. And I think this really expresses what I'm trying to say to you all. Dance can tell so much. And the thing is, everyone, in the round, everyone around the world dances. Everyone around the world moves. We can all see or feel and interpret movement. And that's a language in itself. In further research of how dance can be a language, I talked to a former professional dancer and a current PhD student in dance anthropology and education. Her name is Catherine Doolin, as pictured here. I talked to her about her previous career as a professional dancer. She worked for many dance companies all around Europe in a bunch of different countries that all spoke different languages. She was originally English speaking, but she did pick up a couple of different languages. But she said that the most effective way that she communicated with her coworkers, fellow dancers, teachers, everyone, was through dance, through movement. It was this commonality that they shared. They didn't have to speak the same language to understand one another in a dance studio or on stage. This is actually a picture of her in a performance in Germany. She doesn't speak German fluently, but she was able to communicate to everyone in that audience through dance. In her research as a dance anthropologist, she talks about how dance education can help all of us understand cultures better, understand the world better. This idea of the ability to understand nonverbal communication. So, in my own life, I said, I'm a dancer. I've been dancing since I was three years old, little Emily, just dancing around. And as I've grown up as a dancer, I've definitely gotten better at expressing myself, at communicating without words, at understanding movement. I remember as a little kid, I would always go to visit my grandparents. They live kind of far away. And I don't speak Vietnamese very well. They don't speak English very well. But I would always give my grandparents little dance performances, my way of communicating to them that I love them, that I appreciate them, through little dance performances. Through movement, I was able to express these feelings. 
And last winter, I went on a service trip to Vietnam to teach dance and art classes to underprivileged and disabled kids there. And again, there was a language barrier. But I was teaching dance and art, things that we all understand around the world. So I was able to use my body, use my body language, use visuals to communicate with all of these children. So my message to you guys is to acknowledge that there is a language barrier. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it makes us feel like we can't connect with other people. But once we acknowledge that it's there and that it can inhibit us from doing some great things, we can get creative, we can work around it, we can transcend this language barrier. You can connect with people all around the world through different things, like through music, through sports, through art, or through dance. So, gamun, merci beaucoup, gracias, and with my language of dance, thank you. Thank you.